Any thoughts on the shift to USA-made FPV gear? Thank you, CJO, for a $2 super chat. I did talk about that a little earlier. Um, I'll sum up by saying that uh, USA-made FPV gear has to be more expensive than foreign-made FPV gear. That's why it's made in foreign countries in the first place, because the combination of workers' regulations, labor regulations, environmental regulations, tax structures, etc., means that it's cheaper to manufacture in foreign countries, certain foreign countries, and therefore companies can make more profit by doing it. That's why they do it. So then if the companies move manufacturing to the United States, by definition, the price will increase because they are going to want to keep their profits. They're not going to give up profits. Um, and there may be some flexibility there, but the price will go up. Hobbyists don't really give a shit about uh, domestic manufacturing, by and large. There are some hobbyists that are particularly patriotic and are willing to pay a premium for USA-made man- products. But generally, hobbyists want to buy what's cheapest, and as long as it's not of terrible quality, they don't care where it's manufactured. So as USA-made flight components uh, start to ramp up, the driver of that is going to be government and military purchasing who have other reasons, strategic reasons, why you know they don't want stuff manufactured in foreign countries. Like, for example, someone ma- manipulates the products before they get where they're going, and then the products don't do what they're supposed to do, or they do additional things, commit espionage and so forth, right? So uh, those companies are going to be selling to government and military purchasers. And then hobbyists, the reason why hobbyists will make the switch is if there are policies that increase the price or decrease the availability of foreign-made stuff, like tariffs or like import restrictions. And then hobbyists will say, oh, well, I guess I have to buy this USA-made stuff at two or three times the price or whatever the multiplier is. I don't know what the multiplier will be. Maybe it's not two times the price. Maybe it's 0.5x, whatever. But like I've already seen in 2020 when there were all these supply chain disruptions and the price of FPV stuff jacked up by 25 to 50% and sometimes as much as as, as 2x or, or 100%, same thing. And I feel like that definitively drove some people out of the hobby who simply couldn't afford to be in the hobby anymore. And I feel like any uh, price increase has the effect of driving people out and reducing uh, people's interest in the hobby. So that's one of my thoughts on the shift to USA made gear. Blunty, I think you were trying to get in there. Was I? Did I hear that correctly? Yeah, I just wanted... I, you sort of went where I was going to... I mean, you basically said you're not sure what the X increase will be, but like I linked the Rotor Riot Brave FC in the Discord, and this one mm-hmm. to me is an outlier, and I don't really understand. Like, uh, are they doing something to make this cheaper? Are we no. getting a cheaper price is, than the military? Like, this is this is so. This is a. I agree. This is a weird one, and I would like to say, you y- you got me on the live stream before Christmas, and I haven't been drinking. But I'm just feeling a little loose tonight, so I'm going to speak off the cuff. But I would like to be very clear that everything I'm about to say is right off the dome, is my opinion, and is not based on any factual information, whether public or otherwise. And although I have a relationship with Rotor Riot, I mostly keep myself out of their business stuff and just leave it over there in part so that I can just speak off the cuff during a live stream and I don't have to be like, ooh, I know something secret that I have to protect. I don't, I don't, with the, when I saw the price of the Rotorite Brave flight controller and they said it was made in the USA, my first thought was, that's a lie. I, my thought was, it's not possible that they're making this in the United States and selling it at this price. I don't think it's possible that they're, that their cost is $48. I don't think there's any way that you could manufacture this in the USA and make a profit at selling it at $48. Now, that doesn't mean that they haven't figured out a way to do it that I can't conceive of. I am not omniscient. But that was my first thought. And I I will say, I asked. And this is, I feel comfortable sharing this because it makes Rotor Riot look good. So I don't think they'll mind if I share it. But I asked, I was like, guys, are, is this a loss leader? Are you like intentionally selling this at a loss so that you could I don't know what your margin what your motivation would be. 
Because like, if they're selling it to the public for $48 and then they get a military contract, they can't just go charge the military $150 because someone will go, wait a minute, that's the exact same product you sell to the public for $48. You're, you're gouging us. Someone in contracting eventually, like, so if they sell to the public for a given price, yes, I know there's the military markup, you know, but like, that's the price, right? You can't just like double or triple the price and say, well, screw you, you're the military. So like, I don't think the theory that they're selling it at a loss to the public in order to get the military contracts, which is the way they will then mark up, that doesn't seem like that's how contracting works, but I'm not an expert on that. So I can't make this make sense. But I agree, it's ludicrous. I, I have talked to people who do manufacturing. I'm not going to name names, of course, but people who make flight controllers both in and outside the U.S. And they're like, there's no way that I could do that, they say. I don't know what Rotorite's doing. There's no way that, that this manufacturer who I talked to, he said, there's no way I could make a flight controller in the U.S. for that price. I don't know what they're doing. Go ahead, Blunty, if you want to add something to that. You you, uh, no, your, I think you, you you brought the topic up, so then I just went off. No, that's exactly what I was asking. I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, I know who made this. I know where it was made. You right? do? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, are you? Are you? But you're not allowed to say. As far as I know, I'm allowed to say. I, I'm not. I who do you think made it? Who do you think made it? Uh, it's Tanner Ewing. Hold on, let me get this. Tritium is a engineering firm. It's the same people who made the. Um, uh, uh, RID module, flight test RID module. Oh yeah, yeah. Tritium's, uh, Tritium. Yeah, there you go. That guy. So this was designed by him, according yes. to you. At least assembled in their factory. They have a two-sided pick and place. I'm trying to find the engineering like uh, page. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, I know they have the ability to do this work, and they do it here. So the question is, yeah, where where is the money, and how do they do this, and like, where yeah. they assemble? You know, like presumably they have a PCB, they're ordering the PCBs in, and then they assemble all 100%. the PCBs. A hundred percent. That's like again, this that's not me speaking from fact. It's just that's how everyone does it. You don't make right. the PCBs in the USA because because you're not required to. What these guys are trying to do is comply with the National Defense Authorization Act, and NDAA says you are allowed to import raw materials as long as they're assembled in the U.S. So they can buy all the chips from China. And in fact, some of the chips on this board you can only get from China. And some of the chips on this board, like the little capacitors and resistors, are so much cheaper to buy from China that that's just what everybody does. So they buy what, what I assume they do, because it's what everyone does, is they buy the PCBs, they buy the chips, they buy all the parts, and then they put it all in the pick-and-place machine, and they, they place them and solder it here in the U.S., and they go, see, it's USA-made. Yeah, so I agree absolutely. with you there. Yeah, I put the link in the chat. That's the actual one. Mm -hmm. I'm in the Discord. In, oh, in the wrong Discord window. Sorry. There's the Discord window. Tritiumelectronics.com. Embedded systems manufacturing. So, but again... Uh, I've talked to people who say that the, the bomb cost of this, the bill of materials cost, you know, plus the, plus the, you know, obviously the rent on the warehouse, the maintenance on the machines, like that, that there's just no world in which this is profitable if it's made in the U S and, and I, I certainly am, that was my gut reaction and I'm not an expert on that. And either e the, the bottom line is there's something going on here that we don't know. And maybe it's that Rotoriot has or Red Cat has figured out a smart way. Actually, it would be unusual machines. Sorry, not Red Cat. Rotoriot's owned by unusual machines, which is distinct from Red Cat. They figured out some way to do this cheaper than anybody in the whole market can, in which case, God bless them, enjoy making your money. But here's the thing I don't understand. Here's the thing I don't understand. And again, I don't understand it. And that doesn't mean that means that somebody is smarter than me at the table. More good. That's exciting. Why are they selling it for $48? Let's say, let's say they manufacture this thing for $25. That's their cost. So then they have a, a, a 
100% profit margin. They're selling it for $50. They manufacture it for $20, $25. They're making $25 on every flight controller. Why are they selling it for $50? Why aren't they selling it for $60? At $60, it would still be very competitive. Why wouldn't they take $10 more in profit per unit? The typical reason to reduce price is to increase volume. And you're trying to find the optimal price where you're making as much money as possible. It's hard for me to believe that their volume at $50 is so much higher than their volume would be at $60. Why wouldn't they sell it for $60? So again, there's a lot that's confusing about this flight controller. And yeah. guys like Drew Camden and Jeff Thompson and I don't know who the hell else. The only they That's why they're running the business and making a million dollars and not me. Yeah, the last thing I want to end with is that... Uh, I, you know, this is an NDAA product. They're pitching it as such. It's all labeled as such. I do not think there's any world in which they would lie about that. And I know the firmware was made, no, and they... I trust the people who I talk to. I know that it was made there uh, mm -hmm. beyond all reasonable amount of doubt that I can uh, pose. Yep. So that means that for some reason, we've got a $48 slat, you know, they're calling it 58 discounted to 48 on their website, so that's worth thinking about. Uh, for some reason, they're selling this FC. So I think then we have to assume either, like you said, they found some way to make it cheaper. They know how to get these components somehow. They're, we don't know, maybe they're tacking on to some other giant engineering project, right? That's also ordering the same pieces for private equity, right? We don't uh, know. It yeah. could be, right? Maybe. There's all these layers that could be happening, right? And that we can't really uh, know for sure. But I think there are, like, if you reach out and think about it, there are ways this could happen, right? Your, your bomb could get really low if you're, like, I, somehow I, getting to I, tack, jump on with somebody else, right? Like, and now, yeah. now we're offering you these chips for cheap because you're giving us this other deal through a parent company, like Red Cat, for instance, right? I don't know this, but I'm just saying, like, let's say that that engineering firm got a deal from Red Cat, too. That's a private deal they'll never talk about, but now they're allowed to use that BOM cost for the other flight controllers or something, right? It's just mm. speculation, but I can, I can come up with these worlds where this could happen. That's all that I mean. Yeah, I, and, and sure, but I still don't understand why they would sell it for $50 and not, say, $60. And again, I'm not a business guy. Maybe somebody did the market research and they found that the optimal price where they maximize, maximize profit is $50. It feels to me like that is too low. There's almost no flight controllers on the market for $50, never mind a made-in-the-USA flight controller. If they sold it for, I don't know. I mean, the Speedy B F405 stack is $60 for the flight controller and the ESC. Maybe that's not as low a price as it feels like they are. Don't well, know. can I just say one more thing is that sure. like you've talked about before is how much are you really selling to hobbyists when you call it made in USA? You're you not, have to not be at competitive. All. Not at all. So if you, I think when you're talking about what the difference is when you start to go up $10 or $20, like I think it actually does make a substantial difference to the but, end user because they don't care about the tag. Like, you know what I mean? But, like, but, it's going to be about convenience and what again, you package it in with and like other as, things like that, right? As, as long as we're just shooting the shit, Blunty, if it's an yeah. NDAA product, I agree. They're not selling to hobbyists. Nobody, hobbyists don't give a shit about NDAA. So if it's an NDAA product, then your ultimate customer is a, is a government or military buyer well, who presumably I, is buying in large volume, at which point, why wouldn't you mark the price up? Because, because, the, because when the military buys your flight controller, they don't give a shit if it's $50 or $75 or $100, right? I don't that's, agree that's with the dream. Yeah, but I don't. But I don't agree with the statement you said earlier, which is that they can they can't sell it for way more money to the military. That's what all, they always do. That's what everybody does. If you, you have to just... name it a different skew, you dash you do dash T, and that's the military version. Like yep. you can find a way to do it, right? Like you, may, you slap a new silk screen on on the board that says whatever, and then the now way, it's the special military version you, that I, you're going to pay you, ten not, X for because it comes from the you're defense contract. You're not wrong. I see. I see. Yeah. Stacy FPV Mama is in the chat. I'm going to make her a moderator real quick. Uh. Just so she shows up in blue. I would like to be really clear. She just said, I was trying to be, I was very careful about my wording, and I would like you guys to understand that. One of the things she said is, it is absolutely made in the USA. Can I be clear that at no point did I question whether it was made in the USA? But what I said was, if it's made in the USA, this is a this is a confusingly low price, and I cannot understand how the how the price is that low. That's confusing. At no point did I question whether it was made in the USA. I want to be really clear. I pulled Stacy out of bed. I assume Stacy goes to bed at like 8 p.m. with a glass of milk. Uh, and now if she's jumped out of bed in her pajamas because, uh, because she's found out we're talking about her. 
Um, she also says we don't do military markup. That which I presume means that when Rotor Riot sells these products to a government customer, they charge the same price that they do to uh, the public. Um, I, uh, I I and I commend uh, Stacy and Rotor Riot's uh, willingness to make such plain and bold and straightforward statements like that. She also says, it's, see, this is the thing. Here she is right here saying it is not a loss leader. So she's saying we make it in the USA. We don't mark it up for the military. It is not a loss leader. Ergo, we make a profit on every one, which means that they figured out how to make a flight controller for less money than every single other manufacturer in the market, which is astounding. But that's that's what that's what they're saying, and they just that's all they've ever said. No, no, FPV Squadron, you don't deserve a video proving it, because the minute you start trying to prove it to the haters, you just give them more ammunition to question you. I think Stacy's approach is a hundred percent right. People will be like, "Oh yeah, it's made in the USA. Show me the factory." And then they'll, and then you're like, okay, fine. You'll do a factory tour, and people are like, that's not the flight controller I bought. It had a different chip on it. You're lying. They just give them more ammunition. No, you make the statement. You say, believe me or don't, and you leave it at that. I think that's the right approach. You know, and as much as I'm an expert on marketing, I think they're doing it exactly right. So, and frankly, my next thought is. I wish I knew what their secret was, but I kind of don't because it's kind of more fun. It's like when somebody does a magic trick and you're amazed and astounded and then they show you how the trick was done and you're like, oh, oh, you're kind of not impressed anymore. I kind of like living in the mystery of not knowing how the, how the hell Rotorite is doing this. We can quickly break the mystery. Someone told them cheap parts. There's only one piece left, right? They can make it for cheap. That's made in the USA. Like, what else is there? There's, the parts go go in under cheap. The assembly's cheap, right? Those are the only things that could possibly be. That's what how well, this works. Right? I, I don't. I don't know. So they found a way to get cheap. Th- there's no other pieces to the puzzle. We've already. Right. She's already answered there's, the other pieces. There's the materials cost. There's the bill of materials right. cost. And there's the assembly cost. And there's the assembly cost. And there's you know you're paying rent on the building. You're paying the employees to run the machines. You're paying for maintenance on the machines. Yada yada yada. Um. Don't know. It's something. It's something. And I don't think. And and honestly, I don't think Rotor Riot should. T- and, and obviously, Stacy, I don't mean to tell you your business. I certainly would never presume to tell you because clearly you're doing smart things that I would never even have thought of. So keep it up. But I personally hope that Rotor Riot keeps their secret to themselves. Like if it turns out they somehow got all the materials for for five years worth of boards at one-tenth the normal cost, like they fell off the back of a truck or something, and they were like, great, we're going to make cheap flight controllers. Don't ever tell anyone. Just let everybody keep guessing and do your thing. You know? Anyway. Well. Well, this has been fun. I knew I would stir the pot with this one. Hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, it's been uh, a good topic to talk about. Uh, she says the price for the Brave Flight Controller is $58, but we know we have to earn trust in our products and that there will be learning we go through, so early adopters buy in at our discounted rate of $48. Right? That's a very great way to do business. Our goal is to try to bring all of our U.S.-made components to market at no more than 20% more than a comparable Chinese-made component. Um, so the idea, I think, is that it's going to be more expensive, and the the definition of comparable that leaves some wiggle room. I think that there will be hobbyists who say, ah, your product is so much more expensive. And Rotor Riot says, well, look at this comparable product. See, it's only 20% more expensive. And the hobbyist goes, yeah, but there's this other product that's 50% the price that's just, that's good enough. And, and, and so that to me is what I'm comparing it against. And so there's going to be some wiggle room there, but that's fair. Um, yeah. All right. 